Now, we already know that the 19 embassies that we closed down this week were because of some correspondence between some of the major al-Qaeda leaders, including Ayman al-Zawahiri, who was the number one leader of al-Qaeda now that Osama bin Laden is dead. And their top al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula uh, affiliate leader, and that's Nasr al Uh Now, we know that we had intercepted some communica communication, apparently some sort of mail between them, not email, but actual mail between them. But the Daily Beast has a new story about a massive conference call between all the different al-Qaeda leadership across the world that we apparently also intercepted. So, they explain, the Daily Beast has learned that the discussions between the two al-Qaeda leaders happened at a conference call that included the leaders or representatives of the top leadership of al-Qaeda and its affiliates calling in from different locations according to three U.S. officials familiar with the intelligence. All told, said one U.S. intelligence official, more than 20 al-Qaeda operatives were on the call. Now this is as big a leak as I have ever seen in my life. Is there more sensitive, top secret, classified information than the phone call we have intercepted of all of the al-Qaeda leaders? Three intelligence officials clearly leaked to the Daily Beast. Clearly a much bigger leak than anything Edward Snowden or Bradley Manning did. Obviously, my God, could you imagine if they had leaked that? The, the top Al-Qaeda guys, we had them. We had all their stuff tapped. We had the conference call and you let them know and you let them off the hook. So is there a major investigation here? Stay tuned about that. Now, the Al-Qaeda affiliates, as I said, all across the world. There was Nigeria's Boko Haram on the call. The Pakistani Taliban was on the call. Al-Qaeda in Iraq was on the call. Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb was in the call. Oh, nice little uh, pronunciation there. Al-Qaeda's Uzbekistan branch was there. The branch you don't often hear about. And then Al-Qaeda in the Sinai Peninsula, which they described as a fledgling affiliate. It's, oh, well, look at that. We've opened up a new subsidiary in, uh, in, uh, in, the, Sinai, uh, in the Sinai Peninsula. Okay, welcome to the call. One analyst described this as... It was like a meeting of the Legion of Doom. Can you imagine anything more classified that you wouldn't want to leak? That we have that line tapped. Forget whether we're spying in on Americans that have nothing to do with Al-Qaeda and their attacks against us. This is the intelligence we shouldn't let them know about. Even the Daily Beast, who got the leak, thinks that. Quote, Al-Qaeda leaders have assumed the conference calls which gives Wahiri the ability to manage his organization from a re remote location were secure. But leaks about the original intercepts have likely exposed the operation that allowed the U.S. intelligence community to listen in on the Al-Qaeda board meetings. So, yes, this was top information. Yes, now they do know it. We have been exposed, and we can no longer get that intelligence because we've been exposed. Where is the national emergency and international manhunt for these three intelligence officials that leaked this information? And the reality is, of course, it doesn't exist because the government wanted to leak this information so they could brag about how great a job they're doing in the intelligence community. The double standard is outrageous. It's over the top. And who's pointing it out? Now, I'll tell you. Now, Huffington Post, Michael Calderon wrote a nice story about it. Obviously, I've been talking about it. And then the two guys from the Associated Press who were investigated by the government, two reporters who had a leak that was nowhere near as big as this. You remember what the AP scandal, the Justice Department had to, uh, you know, uh, backpedal on it because they had actually tapped 20 different people at the Associated Press just to get these two reporters' sources? Well, those two guys were Adam Goldman and Matt Apuzo. And they rightly say here, Adam Goldman does, I couldn't imagine anything more sensitive than a leak in which it was revealed the NSA was monitoring Ayman al zawahiri commu communications. And he's basically asking, where in the world is the investigation? In fact, he literally asked it. His next uh, question was, why isn't Congress clamoring for a leak investigation? Remember, they tapped Adam Goldman's phone. He's a reporter to try to get his sources. They tapped 18 reporters that weren't even related to the case to get to try to get that information. Where is that kind of effort now? There's no effort, because it was the government who leaked it. They did it on purpose. Matapuzo also says, we now know in real time 
that U.S. monitored heads of AQAP and AQ. And nobody's crying leak investigation. Why? Because it served a purpose, the government's purpose. So you see, the real crime isn't the leak. It isn't breaking the law. This, this leak breaks the law just as much, in fact, more than Edward Snowden's leaks or Bradley Manning's leaks. The, pro the real crime is being an enemy of the state. The state being interpreted as the government in power. Not the state as in the United States of America and its citizens, but the state as in the people who are already in power and would like to keep that power. If you embarrass the government, that is the number one crime in America now. Now, if you're still not convinced, well, let's go to the government in the State Department. Jen Psaki is now the uh, official spokesperson. They're going to ask her, well, is there outrage over these leaks? Let's find out. Conversation about the intercepts. Is there any frustration on behalf of the administration that this this leak has come out that, that we have intercepted these communications between the head of Al Qaeda and uh, the head of AQA, AP. Uh, I, broadly, I would just broadly say that obviously when uh, sensitive information is uh, is provided uh, without speaking to this specific case, uh, obviously that's always a concern to us. So no outrage. I, I don't have anything more for you on it than that. And she never will, because they're not going to investigate those leaks. They're the ones who leaked it. Bradley Manning should immediately be released. Edward Snowden should be welcomed back into the country as the most legitimate whistleblower we've ever had. And if these guys who leaked far more sensitive information are never going to be pursued, and that is an absolute guarantee, then how can you possibly argue that we should put Manning and Snowden in jail? You can't. It's ridiculous.